Hey, it's Van from Candrone. I have my buddy Chris, and today we're gonna to be looking at the Mini 3 Pro versus the Mini 4 Pro. So in terms of the cameras on the Mini 3 Pro and the Mini 4 Pro, they pretty much have the same sensors. They're both one over 1.3 inch CMOS sensors. However, there's a slight difference, and I'll get Chris to elaborate a little bit more on that for me. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Uh, there is a difference. Now, they do have the same size sensor, that one over 1.3 inch CMOS sensor. However, the Mini 4 Pro actually packs into it a stack sensor. And we saw that in the DJI Air 3, which allows for crisper, cleaner processing of data. So you're gonna get higher resolution video files, you're gonna get crisper, cleaner imagery off of your photos, and on top of that, it gives you the ability to jump back and forth between 12 megapixels and 48 megapixels. So you might be asking yourself, you know, why is that important? If you're a photographer that wants premium flexibility, um, completely untouched images uh, when you're editing, you'll wanna shoot in that 12 megapixel mode because then you have a full range of editing capabilities in post. If you don't necessarily want to go through the process of denoising your photos, you don't wanna go through the process of messing with the dynamic range, if you shoot in the 48 megapixel mode, that stacked sensor paired with some bare processing actually cleans it up for you so you have less noise, you've got a higher level of dynamic range, and the photo overall is higher quality. So it takes a lot of that post out of the equation and gives you a usable image right off the drone. That sounds amazing. So Chris, you've had the Mini 4 Pro for a little while now. Would you say that it's a, a huge upgrade uh, from the Mini 3 Pro in terms of image quality? Yeah, that's a great question and a question a lot of people are asking themselves right now is, should I upgrade from the Mini 3 Pro to the Mini 4 Pro? My answer would be if you have the Mini 3 Pro, you're pretty good right now. Uh, the, the difference between the two isn't so noticeable that it's worth the upgrade to the Mini 4 from the Mini 3. However, if you're using an older drone, uh, whether it's a Mavic Mini, a Mini 2, or you're just looking to add something that's more compact and portable, definitely go with the Mini 4 Pro because the improvement is definitely there. You'll see the difference between the two, especially if you've got an eye for photo and video. The Mini 4 Pro is gonna be your option there. Right on. So. In short, I'd say if you have the Mini 3 Pro already, it's still a great drone. Keep that. So unless you're replacing the drone, the Mini 4 Pro would be a, a, a good upgrade for that, right? Awesome. So in terms of uh, color profiles, the Mini 3 Pro has the D-Cinelike. Uh, however, there is an upgrade in the, in the Mini 4 Pro. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so both drones have your normal and HLG shooting modes, of course, and that gives you uh, some nice variety. However, in the past, we've seen D-Cinelike as the, the go-to log footage for the Mini Drone series. With the Mini 4 Pro, we've now upgraded to D-Log-M. And when you talk about D-Log-M versus D-Cinelike versus D-Log, it's sort of on a spectrum. So D-Cinelike is sort of log light, it gives you the ability to have a desaturated, low contrast image uh, that you can then edit and post better than you can a normal HLG color profile. D log M is the next step up. That's sort of like log light 2.0. It gives you the ability to edit the dynamic range and play with the color grades at a finer level of detail. And then of course you've got D log, which we won't get into great detail here, but that is true log footage, something you'd see on any other camera platform that allows you maximum flexibility in your dynamic range as well as your color grading. That's great. So in terms of who would this, who would really benefit from this uh, better color profile, uh, would you say that'd be like a, you know, somebody that who's a photographer or cinematographer that would really want the control of their images? Yeah, so if you're looking to use this for a wider array, array of applications, uh, more cinematic footage, uh, higher level photography, you would definitely want to go with the Mini 4 Pro because that D-Log M profile gives you more options in terms of post-production manipulation. Um, if you're somebody that isn't necessarily concerned about that too much. Uh, you just need a little bit of flexibility in color grading. The Mini 3 Pro is gonna be great. But again, if you just wanna open more doors for yourself with your micro drone, your mini drone, uh, you're gonna go with the Mini 4 Pro because that D-Log M is just that much more flexible. Amazing. Um, let's talk about range. It's kind of uh, a huge topic in the, in the drone community. So the Mini 3 Pro does have the OcuSync 3 system, which gives you about, uh, about eight, an eight kilometer range uh, in optimal conditions. Now you shouldn't ever really fly out that far. You should always keep an eye on the drone within visual line of sight. But the Mini 4 Pro does improve uh, in terms of the new OcuSync 4. Can you kind of elaborate on that for me? Yeah, absolutely. Really impressive range out of the Mini 3 Pro with that eight kilometers. Um, the Mini 4 Pro though, really sort of knocks it out of the park compared to the Mini 3 Pro. OcuSync 4 is really responsible for that. We saw that in the DJI Air 3. It's been transitioned over to the Mini 4 Pro and you get 20 kilometers of range out of the OcuSync 4 system. As you said, you shouldn't really ever fly that far away because that's certainly beyond visual line of sight with a drone this small. 
However, what that does mean and what DJI develops this system for is better signal penetration. So if we go to the cities of Toronto or Vancouver where it's very signal restrictive, you've got a lot of tall buildings, you've got a lot of Wi-Fi and signal interference, this is gonna be the better drone between the two because it's got a stronger, more reliable signal with that 20 kilometer range. That sounds great. Um, so in terms of safety features of uh, these drones, um, it started off with, I guess, the Mini 3 when it came out with the tri-directional obstacle avoidance system. So you have the front, the rear, and the bottom. So with the Mini 4 Pro, you now have omnidirectional uh, obstacle avoidance system. That's correct, yeah. And you'll see that even the sensors are a little bit different compared to uh, the Mini 3 Pro. They've got more of a fisheye effect on them, yeah. which allows the sensors to see more around the drone. So you've got your front and your rear obstacle avoidance sensors. However, they've been angled and adjusted so that they can also see the sides and they can also see above the drone as well. And then of course, you've got your downward obstacle avoidance too. So you've got 360 degrees of sensor protection when it comes to obstacle avoidance, which is great for people that are just getting into flying drones because it takes a lot of the risk out of it. Of course, you should never depend fully on your technology because that's where you cause problems for yourself. But if you're flying in an environment that has maybe a few trees in it, maybe a few buildings, the obstacle avoidance on this drone and its ability to see everything around it is going to save you at least more than once. For sure. And, you know, Christmas is coming up. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of these under their Christmas tree. And uh, this will really help, uh, you know, avoid some broken drones uh, on your first try. So really increases the uh, confidence of, of the pilot with these safety systems, That's right? Perfect. Um, that's great. So the other feature that we're going to talk about is it's pretty amazing at how they were able to fit all this technology in such a small drone. The Mini 3s come with some intelligent flight modes that can get you some really nice cinematic shots uh, automatically. Um, with the Mini 4 Pro now, it does have waypoints. So want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, waypoints was a huge feature implemented in the Mini 4 Pro. You saw a lot of the, of the old flight modes that we've seen with other drones in the Mini 3 Pro. You've got master shots, you've got hyperlapses, you've got all of these uh, abilities to shoot autonomously with your drone, which results, like you said, in very smooth cinematic footage. Waypoints, however, now gives you the ability to customize your route. With master shots, it's got a few patterns that it flies, which is fantastic. But if you need something customized to a certain type of shoot, Waypoints is gonna be the thing that you use. You can actually go in and before you even put the drone in the air, you can pre-program your waypoints. Uh, you can then use the drone also to get a visualization of what your waypoints are gonna be like. You can launch the drone, fly out to a waypoint, set it based upon what you see, and then continue on with your mission. Now, you may be asking yourself, you know, we've never seen this before in the Mini 4 Pro. What does this do and why does this give it a leg up on the Mini 3 Pro? It opens the door for a lot wider use case on the Mini 4 Pro. We don't have a concrete, this is absolutely going to work, but we know that there are a lot of third-party mapping software companies out there working to integrate their software with the data that's collected by DJI's drone systems. So I would say in the very near future, if it's not already happening, we're gonna be able to use the Mini 4 Pro for some lower level mapping. You'll be able to do some ortho mosaics that aren't necessarily as precise as what you'll get out of a Mavic 3 Enterprise, but it'll be enough if you just wanna get a general idea of a plot of land and survey a plot of land. Yeah, that's amazing. So as Chris said, uh, the data would probably more be more for qualitative purposes rather than you no know, high accuracy surveying, but it really does open up the doors for kind of getting into the other fields within the drone industry, right? Like mapping and all that kind of stuff, going beyond the aerial photography. So yeah, it's uh, quite amazing that they've kind of packed uh, a feature that you'd find in the more high-end drones uh, in the Mavic 3 Enterprise series into such a small package essentially. Absolutely. Yeah. So we want to know if you think it's worth upgrading from the Mini 3 Pro to the Mini 4 Pro. Let us know down in the comments below. We want to hear your opinion. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up icon. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button too. And while you're at it, hit the bell icon. You'll get a notification every time we post a new video. And we will see you in the next video.